the shadow of Fu Manchu. Based on the stories by Sax Roma. Mysterious Dr. Amber, Shan Greville discovers Lee King Su, Dr. Fu Manchu's chief assistant, and from him learns that Nayland Smith is about to enter a trap set for him by Paolo Sui. In leaving Lee King Su's apartment, Greville himself is kidnapped and taken to Paolo Sui's house. Under the spell of her hypnotic influence, he sees in her not the arch villainess, but an exotically beautiful woman who professes to be madly in love with him. About to take her in his arms, a distant shout from Nayland Smith calling his name breaks the spell. Furious, Paolo Sui has him carried bound hand and foot to a room in which he finds Nayland Smith, also a prisoner. I've made my last mistake, Greville. By my own instructions, Weymouth and Yale are watching the wrong house. They're at 18 South Road, Finchley. Good heavens. I thought I'd found a secret base of operations in the house of Dr. Murray, who bought out Petrie's practice several years ago. I've used the place before for the same purpose. Naturally, I took great pains to have myself invited there as a guest. They knew what you were up to? Evidently, and for some time past. I discovered, too late, of course, that Murray's parlor maid, a Miss Palmer, is a spy for the enemy. Oh, she doesn't know the real identity of her employer, but she has been useful to them. Smith, we've got to get out of this somehow. No use struggling with those lashings, Greville. You couldn't hope to get out of them. They're the work of a specialist, a Dayak sailor. A fellow with the mark of Collie on his forehead? He helped the other fellow tie me up. I thought he was a Burmese. A member of the murder group, yes. A Burmese, no. He belongs to Borneo. But we can't just sit here and... Now, relax, old chap. It's no use, I tell you. I've been tied up by these fellows before. Oh, what a mess. What did you mean when you said uh, Weymouth and Yale were watching the wrong house? I mean that because of my stupidity, we're going to pay a stiff price. You see, Yale sent me a clue today. Faked, though he didn't know it. He picked it up in Limehouse somewhere. Fragments of torn-up correspondence in Chinese and cipher notes. I broke them down by four o'clock. It revealed a Finchley address. So I phoned Weymouth from Murray's. I was with him this afternoon. I gave him the address, 18 South Road. Told him to stand by from eight o'clock on until he heard further from me. And uh, what of this spy in Murray's house, this maid? Well, as I came into the reception room, she was at the phone. Yes, yes, Palmer speaking. His name is Nayland Smith. He is... Call for me, Palmer. Who? Oh, oh, no, no, there's no one by the name of Nayland Smith at this address. Uh, you, you must have the wrong number. Oh, Mr. Smith, it, it was somebody, a, a lady, sir. She she asked if uh, Mr. Nayland Smith uh, lived or was visiting here. I see. And you followed instructions, of course, by saying that no one of that name was here. Very good, Palmer. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. You were clever enough, Greville, to talk yourself out of it. But I had my suspicions. So it's all the less excusable that I should have walked into this trap. 
But how did you get to this address? How did you get here? Well, it's usually fairly safe to pick up a taxi on the main road, but when I left Murray's house to go to 18 South Road in Finchley, I made a ridiculous blunder. How so? I left by the side door. A taxi drew up at the curb and opened the door. I stepped in and... <laughs> End of story. The windows were fastened, the door locked automatically behind me. A charge of gas was blown into the car and... <laughs> well, here I am. They were waiting for you. Why, of course. I'm getting old, Greville. Genghis Khan must have used that trick in his ox carts. Then uh, Weymouth and Yale? Or... Weymouth and Yale were the flying squad are covering the house of some perfectly innocent citizen in Finchley. What they'll do when I don't give them the prearranged signal, I can't imagine. And they haven't the ghost of a clue to where we are. Exactly, Greville, they haven't. It's beside Regent's Canal, that's all I know about it. I saw the canal from an upper window. Which doesn't help us much. But you, how did you land in this mess? Why, I was on my way back to the Park Avenue after my interview with Lee King Sue. Your interview? Oh, well, what do you mean? Well, after Weymouth uh, left my room, the phone rang. Mm -hmm. It was our mysterious friend, Dr. Amber. He asked me to come to his rooms. When I got there, I discovered, or rather he informed me, that his name was Lee King Sue. Yes, go on. Well, he told me that you were in great danger. They waylaid me just outside Lee King Sue's door. Here I am. And that's what I meant when I said that I was the cause of our being here. Had I phoned Weymouth from the Burlington Arcade instead of making for the hotel... He might have gotten in touch with me in time to prevent this. Well, after my arrival, Follow Sweet showed me Lee King Sue uh, in a trunk. They got him in the meantime, and I understand. he appeared to be dead. Hmm. So Lee King Sue was the mysterious Dr. Amber. Do you know who Lee King Sue really is, Greville? Apart from being a graduate of Canton University, no. Dr. Fu Manchu's chief assistant... Great Scott. Does that mean anything to you? Why, by Jove. If that's the case, then Dr. Fu Manchu is responsible for Sir Lionel's recovery and mine. Precisely. And Lee said that my aims and theirs were identical for the moment. What could he have meant by that? By Jove, Greville, I think I have it. Spying on Farlow Sui by Fu Manchu's orders, without a doubt. And what about her having stolen power, which had to be restored to, to somebody? Right, right, good Lord, why couldn't I have seen this? Listen, the doorbell. Quick, Heros, take your knife and stand here. See that they remain silent. What's this? Better do it, old chap. He means business. I still have something to say to Mr. Smith later. But if they make one sound, use your knife, Feroz. Smith. Silence. Not a sound, but it'll be your last. An unexpected visit of some kind, Greville. Listen. How do you do? Uh, we are looking for a young lady. She was supposed to have uh, come to this address. A young lady? No young lady has come here. Won't you come in? Uh, what made you think she was here? Why, the taxi driver who brought her from the railroad station gave us this address. I am very sorry, but as you can see, no one has been here. Well, I'm sorry, madam, to have been so much trouble. Smith, that's way much. Silence. No trouble, no trouble at all. I hope you are satisfied. If there is anything else... Nothing more, madam, thank you. It's quite evident that the person didn't come to this house. I can only apologize for troubling you. No trouble at all, sir. Good night, madam, and thank you again. Good night. Good night. Weymouth. A divine opportunity wasted. What was he doing here? What did he mean by the person didn't come here? Can't you guess, Greville? And who the deuce was the old lady with the quavery voice? I wonder... That will do, Fellow. You may leave now. Look, Smith. The old lady, black gloves, white hair, glasses. Follow Swee. A difficult moment, Sean. Something I had not foreseen and not provided for. <laughs> A keener brain such as yours, Mr. Smith, might have questioned the gloves, even in the case of an eccentric old lady. Your hands are rather distinctive, Follow Swee. Thank you, Mr. Smith. A person was traced here. Fortunately, the taxi driver who brought the person was in doubt about the number. Fortunate for you that Superintendent Weymouth didn't see through your disguise. It was nevertheless clever of him to find the man who had driven her from the station. The lady. I thought so. I know who it is. I respect you, Mr. Smith. So much so that your removal is necessary to my plans. I promise you that removal will be swift and painless. <laughs> Thanks. A traitor has already paid the price. When Lee King Sue and you are found together... The inference will be obvious. And I have arranged for you to be found at the Limehouse end of the Regent's Canal. Congratulations. You wear the cloak of your lamented father gracefully. For you, Shan. I have pleasant duties in Indochina, but I must return immediately. My work here unfinished because of you, Nayland Smith. But I am not jealous, Shan. And you shall not be lonely. Farouk! Shan! 
Good heavens, Rima. Oh, I suspected this. They said you were ill, Shan, and I came at once without waiting to tell anyone. Oh, Shan, what is Be it? Be silent, child. Sit down. Leave us, Faros. Rima, Shan Gravel attracts me, apart from which he has qualities which will prove useful when we are in Egypt. However, I do not wish to steal him from you. He would be unhappy without you. And so you intend taking us to the east? How are you going to accomplish this? Let me finish. Nayland Smith has checked me, would always check me. He knows too much of my plans. So do you, Sean. If Superintendent Weymouth had come alone, he would have remained also. After I'm gone, he might become dangerous. Nevertheless, he must wait. His coming here tonight was an accident due to my consideration of your happiness. My happiness? <laughs> I see. Alone, I might prove difficult. With Rima in your power, I might become your slave. Clever follow sweet. More and more, I regret the absence of Dr. Fu Manchu. I'd rather deal with him than with his daughter. Why do you assume my father to be dead? I don't assume anything of the kind. I know he's alive. How do you know? It's my business to know. Yes. Dr. Fu Manchu is alive. But his age prohibits his traveling. Otherwise, he would probably be here in England now. Smith, she doesn't... Quiet. Know. You spoke, Shan? Uh, no, nothing. The work that my father laid down, I have taken up. The Sifan, Mr. Smith, is a power again. Chan, do you choose that you and Rima travel as baggage, or will you bow to the inevitable? Agree. Men alive, agree. You know what she means to do. No, Chan. I don't know what she means. I can only guess. But you wouldn't bargain. He would. So would I, if I had the chance. Don't be foolish, Rima. This isn't a game of tennis. But, Mr. Smith... You don't know the rules of this game. There's only one thing to play for, life. While one of us lives, there's always a chance that that one may win. Agree, Gravel. It's 9,000 miles to China with two active brains alert. Anything may happen. I agree. On the distinct understanding that Rima is not to be harmed, nor in any way molested, and that Mr. Smith is released tonight. I will not release Mr. Smith. Then follow Sui. It's a stalemate. Stalemate? <laughs> By no means. You will both go to Indochina, whether you like the idea or not, as baggage in a trunk. Don't be a fool, man. Do as I say. Agree. No, Shen, no. You Look out. Behind you, Gravel. Chinese cabinet, it's opening. Hello, Ahmed, quick! Stand where you are. By the great image. Kneel, Falusui, you little thief. Kneel. I am standing. Greville, it's Dr. Fu Manchu. <laughs> Shadow of Fu Manchu.